Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. We have an article here coming from Reuters, and uh, <clears throat> we have a, a statement coming from uh, the president of Ukraine, Zelensky. And uh, I think he continues to make my point that uh, Ukraine plays the same, uh, I don't want to say game, but I can find a better word, uh, the same game as Poland played <clears throat> before uh, September 1st, 1939. And that is uh, negotiating or not negotiating at all. In this case, uh, the Ukrainians do not negotiate with Russians citing preconditions that they know the Russians will not. And not only the Russians, the circumstances in the field tell you that that's that's too late as i said before it's like you you know cast a rock going in a canyon you can't bring it back it's going down so when you say well i'm going to talk to you when you have that rock comes back the, you know the birds left the cage is not coming back so saying that i'm not going to uh, negotiate with russia if this or, or if this or if this there are certain things that are not coming back and it seems like Zelensky wants to find all kinds of justification, justifications and preconditions that will never, will never be fulfilled by the other side. And he knows that. The other side says no, uh, knows that too. But it shows like he's got something to negotiate. We know that he's not allowed to negotiate. What was with Poland? Poland was negotiating, quote unquote, with uh, Germany uh, in the 30s regarding the Danzig corridor. Gdansk uh, region that was given taken from Prussia from Russia from uh, Prussia from Prussia from uh, Germany after the first world war and given to uh, Poland when Poland was reformed after the second world war Poland did not exist between uh, 1790 something or 80 something until the 19 after the first after the first world war poland was not a country it was not there it was taken by others separated whatever and then after the first world war poland was made by you know giving land from other countries and its natural territory that it had since i don't know centuries the problem is they gave Dan danzig gdansk with majority population german to poland and that created problems and then when Hitler got a little bit uh, like this, so we want that back or at least allow us to have a, a, a kind of corridor where we can have uh, transfer and so on with them and communication and blah, 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 transit. And maybe you can give them some autonomy, something like that. There were around 94% or whatever. There were Germans in that area. And the Poles negotiated in bad faith in a way that they had no intention to facilitate anything but they didn't tell the, the germans you know what no they said yeah we can talk about yeah let's talk let's meet in three months okay nothing comes out in five months and again demands that were unworkable why because they had behind great britain who told the polish uh, government we are here don't worry if if you know and that's in bad faith because you know you can always say no because the other guys if they want to invade you you have the other ones that intervene and that's what happened there in this case let's read this article it comes from reuters and says that uh, from today august 7 2022 ukraine's zelensky rules out talks if russia holds referendums so he said well i'm not going to talk to russia if they hold a referendum okay they don't hold right now are you going to talk to them right now? No, no, no. We're not going to talk to Russia unless Russian military goes back to its borders before um, um, February 24th. Okay, let's do that. Oh, and no, we're not going to talk to Russia until you bring back to life everybody who was dead and you repair, re, you re, reconstruct our economies and our cities. Okay, we're not going to do that until, you know, you can ask forever things that will not, even if you just exaggerate and push it to the extreme, like to absurd, uh, they will not be able to, to fulfill. That thing is done. The pre these preconditions that right now Zelensky is not willing to talk until they, they, they are met, they were met before February 24th. I didn't hear any negotiating. He wanted to renegotiate 
the Minsk agreements that were already negotiated. So why would the Russians, for instance, or the parties involved in the agreement renegotiate something that was already negotiated? Because you say, I don't, I don't recognize it anymore. Well, how do I know that after we do negotiate it again, you will not do the same thing because you already did it. It doesn't work that way in diplomacy. If you sign the document, you go buy it. You can't just say, you know what? Uh, I'm not going to follow that anymore. Like the United States did with Iran deal, but that Trump got out. It was not, you know, uh, I, if it was the United States who signed that uh, agreement with Iran and Europeans, it was not Trump. And Trump decided to say, you know what? We just get out. We don't, we don't care about what United States signed with those guys. No, no. So then who do you think want to have another contract or sign anything with the Americans again? If they could to avoid being pushed into that. Nobody. Because they say, well, they got out. They didn't follow through. So that means they're not trustworthy. That's how it works in diplomacy and in life too. Uh, for the same, the same here. Why would everybody else do another uh, negotiating with these guys before February 24th? When they already did it. It was done. It was done in 2014. Minsk agreements. And then he says, no, until they're going to make, they're going to do. It's already done. They will do what they said they will do. Those there will be referendums, they will take over, they will incorporate it to Russia. So you will never, so stop saying that. You're never going to negotiate. It's too late. So you either negotiate under the current circumstances and you prevent more shit occurring to the Ukrainians, Mr. Zelensky, or you, you know, you have to stop either now, like the like Germans said, the French said, it's time for you to not go. And then they were, um, oh, these are Putin's, what do you mean? Don't tell us what to do. Like the Americans don't tell you what to do. So you, you, President Zelensky said on Sunday that if Russia proceeded with referendums in occupied areas of the, his country of joining Russia, there could be no talks with Ukraine or its international allies. Okay, we know that. And it seems like they don't give a about it. Uh, so, you know, uh, our country's position remains what it always has been. We will give up nothing of what is ours. Well, that's discussable because that's history, my boy. Uh, history says otherwise. That was given to you like many other things. Why don't you give back northern, uh, your southern, Romanian northern territories, Basa, uh, Bukovina. Why don't you give that to Romania for a change, which is not yours? Oh, it's yours? Uh, oh, okay. Since when? You are not even a country. You are not even a country. Anyway, when uh, those territories were wherever they were, but we're not going to go into Romania. Those are weasels too. So uh, I don't want to get a little bit uh, too upset for uh, with extra. So nothing's going to happen here. This guy is going to find something that we're not going to negotiate because right now is uh, is raining or something. And unfortunately, he's doing OK and he will be doing OK. Unless someone, if it's stupid, stupid enough, is gonna, you know, take him to the other side. But otherwise, he's gonna be all right. I tell you what's gonna happen with Zelensky. That's my prediction. Uh, whatever happens, if no, let's say, put outside the fact that he might be blown up or something. Let's put it aside. These are the options that I see, and not necessarily in this order. One, the um, the Ukrainian military will uh, just uh, sideline him gonna take him out and say you know bye bye and let's say there's two options he's gonna to go to America or to London there's the uh, two location where they where they go I don't think it's gonna to go to Israel let's use the third one for people of uh, this kind of <clears throat> so that's gonna be one one version or he's gonna be shot by the by his but we don't want to talk about that so he's gonna if the military secondly he receives an order from uh, uh, United States that he has to uh, just decide it's too much for him and he has to uh, accept the peace and start this and he's gonna be out he's gonna go, go again either go to the United States or to London the same London not uh, not Great Britain or England London that's the position that's location of these guys and then um, you have uh, um, an option when the Russians are coming over and he has to flee and when he's gonna fly he's gonna be going again somewhere else temporarily in Poland and then go somewhere else this is th these are the options with uh, with Zelensky he's not if 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 the Russians don't blow him up, if the 
someone uh, kills him from around him, which is his bodyguards, uh, they will be paid more than uh, they get paid at the currently, so they will take care of him. Or the military, his, his Ukrainian military will take care of him. This is when he, he's like that. But the rest, he's going to be fine. He's going to be fine. He's not, even if he's, he's even if Ukraine ex ceases to exist or not, he's still going to, still going to be for the rest of his life like uh, Gorbachev, you know, by, he, by his people, by Ukrainians consider this, but by the West consider that. Why do you think Gorbachev is living in California and he's not living in uh, Russia? Hmm? <laughs> because he was such a good guy, he defended and he did. Anyway. That these are the, the the scenarios I see with this guy. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.